Welcome back to Good Day State Line. The holidays don't just mean spending time with your human friends and family. We have to talk about our pets too. Tonight we're talking with Dr. Ruth Ann Lobos, lead veterinarian at Merrick Pet Care. Hello. Hi there. I am so excited to share some tips for pet parents out there so we can all have a safe and healthy holiday. I think that's so important because you you know you want to spoil your pet. You want to make them part of the holidays, but there I think there's some do's and don'ts, and that's what you're telling us about tonight. For sure. And there was actually a study done by Cornell University's vet school that talked about oh, almost 60% of pet parents admitted to sharing some of their holiday dinners with their pets. So we want to make sure that we kind of outline what's good for our pets and what we should steer clear of. All right. So that's where we're starting, right? With food. Take us through what we should share and what we should keep to ourselves. Right. Well, it's important to remember that most human food is not a, a regular part of our pet's diet. So little small pieces are going to be key to making sure we don't upset their tummies. And also thinking about it as we're preparing our meals. So like, for example, on our uh, holiday menu are certainly sweet potatoes and pumpkin pie. So as I'm making those sweet potatoes, before I add in the butter and the sugar and the marshmallows, I'll take a little bit and put it on the side of just those plain sweet potatoes. The same for the pumpkin puree because I've got three dogs at home and they certainly want to take part in a little bit of that festivity. Um, the other thing that's really great is nice lean white turkey meat. So again, nice plain, no extra gravy or seasonings and spices and just a few little morsels so they can, again, feel like they're part of the celebration. Um, but what I even love even more is um, engaging them in some of our you know, their own dog treats. So one of our household favorites are Zook's Mini Naturals and they come in pumpkin flavor. So pumpkin is certainly the flavor of the season. <laughs> yep. And I can put them in a little Kong and they can go in and as they're trying to kind of get those treats out and engage their minds as well as their bellies and they stay out from underfoot of me as I'm prepping for our Thanksgiving dinner. You know, I was at my parents recently and they got a new puppy and I was opening their fridge and I was like, oh, mom, what's this? And she's like, oh, don't eat that. That's for Brando. It's his pureed pumpkin. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right. This, this new dog is really your child, isn't he? <laughs> That's right. They are such dear family members. So tell us a little more about how we should be uh, celebrating with our pets this season. You have some stocking stuffer ideas, I think. Yeah, so some great ideas to, again, help to kind of challenge their brains as well as give them an outlet for their mental energy. I really love any of those puzzle toys that they make. Um, those are just fantastic ways to, um, to keep them occupied as well as let them have a little bit of fun if the weather's not so great outside. Um, and we don't want to forget about our cats, right? Um, they love cardboard boxes. So I do a lot of <laughs> online shopping. I'm sure your viewers do, do, do as well. So putting together a little obstacle course for our cats can be a great idea for them to be able to, again, get some of those wiggles out and enjoy themselves as well as challenge their body a little bit and have some fun. That's too much fun. What an idea. I can't wait to see all of our viewers with cats send in their photos of the obstacle courses that they have built. <laughs> I love that. A couple more things before we go. Just um, regarding like decor and the tree, what should we make sure to avoid um, when we have our pets in our home? Yeah, so you certainly, if you can, want to keep the tree away from your pets when they're unsupervised so they don't get too mischievous. Um, if you do have cats at home, one of the great things that I love to do is to be able to tie with just a piece of fishing line the top of the tree to either the ceiling or the wall or something like that so that if they do decide to climb up, that tree doesn't come crashing down and you've got broken ornaments, which pose a whole different kind of risk for them. And then certainly if you're gonna be having guests over during this holiday season, making sure that your pet's ID tag and microchip information are up to date is gonna be key. Just in case they happen to slip out the front door or the back door, they'll be able to be reunited with you as quickly as possible. All right, before we go, what percentage of your holiday shopping do you think you're doing for your pets versus your human friends and family? Hmm, can I go no comment on that one? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks, you too. We'll be right back with more Good Day State Line.